Hello everyone, this is Anita Horsley, aka Captivate Crazy. I am so excited to show you this advanced action today using motion paths, states, audio, and delayed actions, all within advanced actions. And this creates a really cool effect. Additionally, this course is responsive, so it will look awesome in any size device. All right, first, let me show you the finished effect. There's a little audio. On the screen are boxes listing three different levels of e-learning. Click on each box to read a description of what's included in each type of e-learning and, on average, how much time it takes to develop one hour of training. Okay, so notice you're not able to click on the intermediate e-learning, advanced e-learning, or the next button, but you can click on the basic e-learning. You get a whoosh sound and the arrow comes out and a two second delay and the circle comes out. That one's a little off, we'll fix that later. That's how it should rock and roll. All right, so that is it. But as I mentioned, this is responsive. So as you can see here up in the preview, it looks great no matter what size device you are in. You can read it, you can interact with it, it's Thanks even, for joining me. Oops, even been set up that On the it screen are resets. boxes listing three different levels of... All right, pretty cool stuff. All right, so let's take a look at how I created this advanced action. The first thing you do is obviously get all your objects on the screen and name them. So in my timeline, you can see... I bring this up here. You can see I have named my basic box, basic circle, basic arrow, intermediate box, circle, arrow, advanced box, circle, arrow. I have a number hours text box up here and I have my next button here. Now you may be wondering why I did not group these. The reason is, is that you cannot apply an effect to an individual object within a group in an advanced action within Captivate 9, a motion, like a, a, an effect. So you can only apply it to the entire group, which is really cool, um, but that's not what I wanted to do in this case. All right, so let's say you have inserted all your objects, you've named all your objects. Next, what you need to do is create your states for the boxes so that they change color when you click them, if that's what you want to happen. So you're going to click on the first box, the basic e-learning box, and then click in the properties panel, state view. All right, it takes me to my state views. Notice I have a normal, a rollover, and a down. These come with any buttons. So these are built in states. What I did was I created a new state, and that can be done by either right clicking and adding a state. Um, or going up to this um, plus new state and then you can name it and create it. Now with these states, they are sort of like independent slides, so to speak. So you can create whatever you want on that, on that state and it doesn't have to be the same box. So it could be um, anything that you want it to be. To exit out of the state, click up the in the icon panel up here in the icon toolbar, exit state, and then go to the intermediate e-learning box and let's go to the properties panel, state view. And notice I changed the normal state to gray. So when they come into the slide, the normal state will be gray. I have a down and interactive, so that means that that's the one they're on intermediate active and I also have a done state so I created two new states and I got rid of my rollover state just by I can delete states or now if I wanted to add a new state notice I have now a built-in state which is the rollover because that's the one I deleted so I have um, an active and a done state for the intermediate and for the advanced. If I wanted to bring back that rollover, I could add state, 
click OK, and now I've got a rollover effect if I wanted that rollover. Um, since I'm going to do it there, I might as well do it to my intermediate as well. Just go ahead and add that rollover back in. Okay. Exit state. So we've got the states. The last one I want to do is my next button. And for my next button, what I did was I made the normal state gray and the active state green. So when they come into it, it will be gray. And when it um, when they click all three, it will turn green. Okay, now let's create the variables. The only reason why I created variables is because the customer didn't want the next button to be active until all three boxes were clicked. So I needed to tell Captivate that each box was clicked by creating a Boolean variable. So if I go to project variables, you can see I've already created these variables. You would just add new, type in the name, and a Boolean variable is you give a value of either zero or one. Zero in this case, meaning that the, the box has not been clicked and one meaning the box has been clicked. And so when the user clicks it, it will trigger the action. And when I, in the advanced action, change the value to one, then it means the box has been clicked. You'll see that in just a second. Okay, so I've got my box advanced, my box basic, and my box intermediate variables. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out. Now we have to set up the actual action. So the first one I did was an on slide enter action. This is actually really just a standard action. So if I go to my properties panel, select the actions tab and go to the script and click on the folder that will bring up my reset action. So as you can see, you could just rename it whatever you want. You can create a conditional or standard. The only reason why I created a conditional was just in case the customer came back and wanted to change the action. Really, this is just a standard action to reset everything back to as if the user had never entered the slide. So that we're showing the basic box, we're hiding the arrows and the circles. Um, we are hiding the number, text, we're changing the state of the advanced box and the intermediate box back to normal. We're disabling the intermediate and advanced box and we're disabling the next button and enabling the basic box. Okay, I'll show you how to set up these actions in just a minute. So let's take a look at the action for each box. For basic e-learning. Go to the Actions tab and let's look at the script. Okay, um, I created a conditional advanced action here. So notice that in the if statement, one is equal to one. That's a literal value of the number one is equal to the literal value of the number one. It's basically saying true is equal to true. Okay. So um, the only reason why we did this is because here in this all clicked action, this is where you tell, this is where you're telling Captivate that all of the variables must be clicked in order for that next button to be enabled. Okay, so let's go back to our basic action here. So we are assigning, we have to assign the variable box basic so we would have to type in our variable and we see that is my variable box basic with the literal value of one. And when you double click this, you can type in A for assign. And just do it one more time, box basic with the literal value of one. So we're telling Captivate now, this is telling Captivate that this box has, so as soon as I click this, it triggers this assigning, it's changing it from zero to one, that it hasn't been clicked to it has been clicked. Now we are disabling the basic box. Okay, so that's my object. We're disabling this object. 
don't necessarily need them to go back and click it lay it on the same slide. It's already done the action. And then we are showing the arrow, okay, because that is hidden on slide enter. We are playing the audio. So we select the play, play audio and um, audio file. It could be anything. And here we've got a wish three, four, I can play it. In. So if I want to change it, play the audio. Okay, now here's where the magic begins, applying the effect to the basic arrow. Now what I can do is I can apply an effect, apply effect to my basic arrow and look at all the options I have here. And these are all HTML5 compatible. Very cool stuff here. Mo even motion path and I can create custom. So I'm going to do an entrance stretch from left and then I can even time it. So I can tell it what where it needs to start on the timeline. In this case, the customer wanted it to show to the effect to last for two seconds and you can do ease ins if you wanted to. That's all I needed to do in this case was just give it a two second duration. Now, this is so cool. All right, now anything that happens after this will happen after the two seconds. So this is now a new action in Captivate where you can delay the action by a literal value of two seconds. And what will happen is this next action, so order does matter here, that it will show the circle after the two seconds. So the uh, um, effect is lasting two seconds, we're delaying the action by two seconds, and then the, sh then the basic circle appears. And the text caption up here. And then we also, after the two seconds, changing the state of the intermediate e-learning box to active state and we are enabling because remember on slide enter we had disabled the intermediate box now we're enabling it so they can actually click it and we are also changing the state of the basic box to done so that the user knows that they've already clicked it pretty cool stuff okay now this all clicked here these are the variables so our basic box is equal to the literal value of one and all conditions are true not any of the conditions are true all conditions are true so the basic box has to be equal to one the intermediate box has to be equal to one it's an and statement not an or statement and the the advanced box has to be equal to one in order for the action the change state of the next button to active and then we enable the next button all right what's super cool about this is that then you can duplicate go up to the upper right hand corner and duplicate this action you can rename it intermediate box or conditional action. And then all you have to do is change your assign the box basic to box intermediate. You disable the intermediate box you show the intermediate arrow you play the same audio you apply the effect to the box intermediate where's my oh intermediate box there it is and we are still going to stretch from left for two seconds we're delaying the action by two seconds, and then we're going to show the intermediate circle. And 
um, we really don't need to show this again because we've already shown it in the first one. We're going to change the state of the advanced box to active and enable the advanced box and change the state of the intermediate box to done and update action. All right, and then of course you would do it for the advanced. And all of these stay the same. The all clicked stays the same. So when you duplicate, those stay the same. You don't need to change anything there. All you do is change these actions. Now you would have to make sure that you apply the correct script to the correct action. So this is basic CA. This one I changed to intermediate box CA. And this one is advanced CA. So I've got all my scripts correct. And let's preview again. But this time, let's preview in Adobe Edge Inspect. And I'm going to show you my mirroring effect on my cell phone. Pretty cool. Let's see if this will work. And I'm using my phone. Pretty cool. Oops, <laughs> I, cha I uh, changed the box, the wrong thing. Okay, so what we did wrong, what I did wrong was in this action, I changed the um, effect to the intermediate box instead of the intermediate arrow. Intermediate arrow, that's why you always test these things. Preview. Let's try again. See how it changes. It responds. Very cool stuff. On the screen are boxes. There we go. And there we go. And voila, we are all done. Pretty cool stuff. I love Adobe Captivate.